Hallelujah. I love a lot of Bibles. There's so much power. Uh, um, I often do broadcasts with like Bibles, like uh, because there are portals in the scriptures that you pull things from. And you travel into these depths of God. Like these are his own, it's his word. So therefore it, it is his world. His word is his world. And this is how he framed everything. Uh, let's go over to Hebrews chapter 11 real quick. I wasn't even going to talk about this, but I just want to say this before I get into the actual impartation of the blessing on here. But let's go over to uh, Hebrews chapter 11. I just saw this in the spirit while I was talking. In verse 3, it says, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Through faith, the worlds were framed by the word of God. I elaborate on this. Um, at a latter time, so that the things which are seen were made of things which do appear. Which that, uh, which that things, which that, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So that means that the Lord created everything by the invisible word that he spoke the word was creating the visible things in which you could see and hear and feel today and so even money cometh all those all those things is a word from god that creates a money encounter with jehovah jireh it creates happenings on earth of investors finances blessings increase in this life because the Lord does things off of the invisible word to get things that you can see into activity. Money cometh is a, is the speech of God. It's his vocabulary. Money cometh is God's victory vocabulary. And the reason why money cometh is so powerful because God has filled you up with power to honor him and he has filled you up with power to receive the honor that he will give you back in return. Money cometh is God. He anointing you to receive the honor that he going to have for you. So it's power to honor God coming from you, but it's power also to receive the honor that God going to place on you. Now, Malachi, that prophet in uh, Malachi, I believe that's chapter four. He was saying, no, 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 I don't think that's chapter four. I think chapter four was dealing with the son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings and the spirit of Elijah to bring the hearts of the fathers to the sons, the hearts of the sons to the fathers. But in Malachi the prophet was saying that God will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you don't have room enough to receive. Now, saints, I want you to catch it. It didn't say pour you out blessings. It said pour you out a blessing. A blessing. Not blessings. And so imagine a blessing still is so big that you won't have room enough to receive that. So how much more the actual blessing pattern of the spirit when it's established in your life that's real heavy now saints i wear a heavy financial anointing but i want you to say that for yourself too i wear a heavy financial anointing and saints, let me shock you it's not because i'm a sower i wear heavy financial anointing because i fear god so I don't take money and do what I want with it. You, you see, see, some of you all could be sowers and you still could take money and do what you want in your spending realm. I have a heavy, I wear a heavy financial anointing on me because I fear God even in my spending. I fear God in my spending. There's, there's a couple of times where the spirit of God would tell me. And give me wisdom and counsel. 
to actually purchase a thing because he know that mentally I'm like, let's find out the wisdom concerning this money. Let's find out the wisdom concerning this financial transaction. I wear a heavy financial anointing because I fear God. The fear of God not only propels somebody into sowing, but it propels them into spending correctly. Because this is the area where even if you do reap, you'll mishandle what you reaped and it'll be like you never reaped. If you don't have the fear of God, even when you do reap, you won't even recognize that you reaped. My God. Sali Correnzo Luis Vienzo. If you don't got the fear of God, you won't even have the sensibility to recognize, hey, this is a harvest. This is God ministering bread for food. This is God giving me uh, uh, a signal that he watching my sowing. So the fear of God is where the anointing become heavy on you for money. Because even in your spending, now watch this here, I'm going to shock you with this here. When the fear of God is on you, you'll have a heavy money anointing, a heavy financial anointing on you because even you will go back on a bad financial transaction and repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have bought that. I apologize. That's how powerful the fear of God in a financial anointing is. The fear of God in a financial anointing will have you even go back and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have bought that. I wanted to buy that, but that wasn't time for that. I was supposed to use that money to sow this or sow that. The fear of God will give you even trembling concerning money that you mishandled. And, and you'll show God, I recognize that I cannot do this in the future without your help. So help me, Lord. Help me. Help me not to be compulsive. Saints, how do people go into debt? Is it just because of bills or is it also because of bad spending? Because before something is a debt, it is a bill. Before it is a bill, it is a purchase by you. So before it's ever a, a, a bill, before it's ever a debt, it has to be something that is, is, is made negligent on your end. So what you have to recognize is that spending is another arena of the financial anointing that a lot of people are untrained in so that uh, the enemy could sneak in through that realm. Now watch this here. Satan could uh, uh, miss you and not have power over you in your sowing, but have power over you in your spending. I want you to let that sink in. Glory to God. Let's go here real quickly. Uh, Job 36 verse. Um, we work it. Verse 11. No, no. Let's go to Job 36, 10. It said that he openeth also their ear to discipline. We just talked about the fear of God. He opened in the heavy financial anointing. He opened also their ear to discipline. See, God opens your ear. Because your ear is a portal. This is where God enters you as well. He enters you through the eye. He enters you through the ear. He enters you through the mouth. Did you know that? God enters you through the portals on your body. <laughs> so so th that's for good or for evil because Satan also enters you in imitation of how God enters you. So Satan enters through the eye, the ear, and uh, the, 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 that's why in uh, 1 John 2, uh, chapter 2, it said, all that's in the world is the lust of the eye. So Satan enters through the eye, the ear, the lust of the flesh. Yeah, that's the body. All right, so look at this. It said, he openeth also their ear to discipline. So God comes through the portal of your ear to train you how to be disciplined. Now, discipline, when it comes to the financial anointing, it, it contains financial fasting. For you to be a proper sower and a proper spender, you have to embrace the law of financial fasting. Now, saints, I do this as well. I live by this. Financial fasting means that even though I have the money to buy something, it's not divine 
to be bought. Because there may be something that you cannot see in the current moment of your desire for it. You know how many times people buy stuff and then they try to get rid of it? Saints, Dr. Mike Murdoch told me that he met several people, including himself, where um, they said that their biggest joy was in buying a church. Their biggest joy was also selling the church. Because they couldn't maintain the church. It was too much expenses and too much stress. And saints, that's how people get into like fundraising. There is there is a true realm where ministers start loving money. The reason why they start loving money because they have placed themselves into responsibilities that exceed the financial level that the spirit will have them on. So when a minister loves money, it's true that they no longer listen to the Holy Ghost. They're listening to their bills. That's why Prophet Joshua Holmes don't got a church, a building, a church building, as you know. Prophet Joshua Holmes has a church. Prophet Joshua Holmes don't have things that the spirit is not placing as my path. I don't do stuff that other people do. I only do what the spirit of God have enjoyment in seeing me do. And so therefore, in that same aspect, I don't have to pressure you all and say, hey, um, you know, they told us we got to be out of this building. We need 50,000 or somebody needs to sow somebody. You don't see me doing that because I follow the spirit. There are preachers that don't follow the spirit. And then when they get hemmed up, they'll they'll rush you. In all actuality, um, it's not that you are the problem. They are the problem because they're not listening to God. That does happen. And and then everything becomes money. I'm not going to call no names, but there are some preachers that when they recognize that they didn't have the money to pay for stuff, then they started like trying to, they, they, they try to pressure people and, uh, you know, it becomes evil. It becomes evil because God not anointing them as Saul no longer. Or it probably wasn't even doing it in the first place. And they'll try to pressure people like, hey, hey, you need to give, you need to give, you need to give. But they are doing stuff that the spirit don't want them to do. And so they get pressured financially on trying to handle it. Since you ever saw me, you ever saw me hold lines at my conference? Telling you all, uh, listen, this is a hundred dollar line, this is a thousand dollar line, this is a five hundred thousand dollar line. The reason why I don't do that because I stick to the spirit. Number one, I ain't gonna do no conference if I ain't got no money for it. You think I'm gonna be begging you? <laughs> Shit. You think I'm gonna put my life in your hands like that? <sighs> now. I'm not going to put my life in your hands and they'll be pressuring y'all to say, hey, we got paid for the venue today. By the time you come, the venue already paid. By the time you come, everything already paid. You never see somebody come in there and be like, hey, y'all got five more minutes because y'all didn't pay. Never. I want to say this and I'm going to leave it alone. There are men and a woman that put their hands to stuff that God is not in, so there's no provision. Remember, vision come with provision. So God ain't going to give you a vision without provision. And if the provision ain't flowing, you need to check the vision if it's right. Because I bet you 100% of the time, the vision is wrong. So I don't seek God for provision. I seek God for vision. When I get the vision, I already know the provision floweth off of the vision. The vision is a carrier of provision. So when God put Adam in the garden, the garden was the vision, but the garden also had provision. When God sent Abram from his father's house, that was the vision, but it also had the provision. Abimelech, wealth transference. 
uh, Abraham go to the south, he very rich. Genesis 13, 2. God tells Isaac to stay in that famine land where the Philistines was. That's the vision. But he sows in that land in verse 12, 13. And in the same year, he reached a hundredfold. Genesis 26, 12, 13 is showing you. No, Genesis 26, 1 and 2 and 3, we see in the vision. Stay in this place. In verse 4 and on. Then we also see the provision in verse 12, verse 13. The vision was really the hidden place of the provision. So when the Lord said, I'll give you the hidden riches of secret places in Isaiah 45, verse 3, there's a vision that he's going to give you first. If you flow with the vision, then the provision going to reward you for your consistency. How can a man be faithful? Proverbs chapter 28, verse 20 said, the faithful man shall abound with blessings. Well, how could he be faithful? Faithfulness means that there is a vision that I stick to, that I am productive in, that I am catering to. So when we look at uh, a faithful man, a faithful man is a man that has continuance in a vision. All right. So so provision is in vision and vision is really instructions It's location. It's a person that you're called to serve. That's why I tell you, God, give you a soul for you to unlock the all. And he, you, you never hear the word souls. You never hear nobody say, hey, souls. I planted my seed in the souls. They say I planted my seed in the soul. A farmer don't say I planted my seed in some souls. A farmer say I planted my seed in that soul. Because in the spirit realm, God gives you a soul. So that he could work out his plan towards you while you're keeping that soul, while you're sowing into that soul. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 27, verse 18. It said, whosoever keep the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof. So he that waiteth on his master shall be honored. We in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 18, it said, he that keepeth the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof. That's deep. Keeping the fig tree, keeping the soil, it said that you're going to be able to eat fruit thereof. That's the harvest. I'm in Proverbs 27, verse 18. It said, and then watch what it said, he that waiteth on his master. Now, saints, there's another angle that I want to take you to this text as well. But whosoever keepeth the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof. That's also in mentorship as well. So that's why I be telling you all, like some of you, all, I trained you, I anointed you so that I can enjoy you. Meaning this, I train you to be respectful so that you can respect me. I train you to be patient so that you will know how to flow with me. I train you how to be honorable so you know how to treat me. So I, that's my way of keeping you. My way of keeping you as a, as a fig is because I want to pull figs from you. I want to be able to see that you have work ethic. I want to be able to see that you have uh, 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 preservation from the devil, that you sanctify yourself. I want to be able to see that you're operating in loyalty, that you're protecting my heart from seeing the devil be able to use you after I spent my hard time. Look, this Saturday, I'm spending my time talking to you about wisdom. You see what I'm saying? So that's a, another realm of keeping the fig tree. Now let's go back to Job 36, verse 10. It says, he openeth thy ear to discipline and commanded that they return from iniquity. See, God commands you to return from iniquity. That means stuff in your heart that you know is wrong, that you know you're not supposed to do. He command that you return from iniquity, that you come out of stuff that he already reveals to you is not right. Now watch this in verse 11. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. Spending your days in prosperity, that's money cometh all the time. Every single day, having a financial open heaven over yourself, having a money portal over you all the time. 
That's what it's talking about. The word of God is saying right here that you shall spend your days in prosperity. So saints, as you can see, if God see that you stubborn and you don't listen and you follow your own way, you can't spend your days in prosperity. Because remember, you got to obey and serve him. Now, obedience and servanthood is two different things, which I told you before. You can obey somebody and not serve them because when you obey them, you do what they say, but you don't stay attentive to them to find out what they're saying. Someone that obeys, solve your problems. Someone that serves, keep on solving your problems. When someone, a body obey, they have a moment of pleasure towards you. When they serve, they commit their life to being pleasurable. Many people don't operate by this and they broke is a joke and they're going to stay broke because they don't, they don't want to obey and serve. They don't want to keep on the path of God. But saints, you could choose this this day and tap into this this day. Money cometh if you refuse to go if. That means don't go away from God's will. Don't go away from God's plan. Let's go over here to Job 22. It says you're going to spend your days in prosperity. So the prosperity anointed is going to be on you every single day. And prosperity angels going to minister for you every single day. And you're going to see the prosperity plan of God every single day. Every single day is going to be prosperous, meaning you're going to be successful in receiving an experience with the word of God. You're going to see the word manifesting for you. Servanthood is so powerful. And when your man of God is amongst you and he's visible, that is an opportunity for you to serve him. Whether you serve him with his words, you serve him with seeds, you serve him with uh, attentiveness, you serve him with praise. All those things. The word of God said, let another man praise you in Proverbs. Praise is not illegal. I'm just showing you all the different avenues of, 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 uh, servanthood. If you sit up there telling some, you know, I know my man of God is not perfect. Shut your dumb ass up. How are you going to say your man of God not perfect? You just, you just left praise and dishonor. I, how are you going to sit there, you know, you know, my man of God, just like every other man got flaws and he got stuff that he got, he got, you know, and so don't be hard on him. You, you think your man of God, they tell us, that's, that's you, Billy. Come on, Billy. How is that praising him? The woman stepped out and said, Saul killed his thousands, David killed his tens of thousands. The woman were praising David. That's what they was doing. Praise. Praise don't have persecution in it at the same time. Praise don't have pollution in it at the same time. Praise is simply praise. When you're in praise, you don't be up there telling some, you know, you know, even, even if my man of God does something wrong, I, I still, I still gonna stand beside him. I'm not going to look at the wrong that he do. I'm just going to stand beside. Huh? Saints, I ain't never tell Dr. Mike Murray, like, oh, you know, Dr. Murray, even though you got times where you do something wrong, I'm still going to stick beside you. You you think that, that you think that they're helpful? You think, you think that they sound honorable? You sound stupid. So praise and servanthood has a voc servanthood has a praise vocabulary and servanthood. It cannot work until you understand who you serve and do you know who you serve in? Do you know who you serve in? Mary Magdalene knew who she was serving. But Judas didn't. And Thomas didn't. Because Thomas said, if I see those holes in your hand, then I believe he didn't know who he was serving. Thomas didn't know who he was serving. Thomas said, I will not believe that he rose from the dead. 
Thomas don't know who he's serving. So every time Thomas obeyed Jesus, he wasn't serving Jesus. He did what Jesus say certain times, but he don't understand who Jesus is. He looking at Jesus as just another man of God, just another man, just another preacher. You know, he got good ministry. I enjoy his ministry. He funny sometimes. He got good sense of humor. Jesus, he was preaching on. He don't know who he's talking to. Meanwhile, this is God Almighty taking over human flesh. And he don't know who he's serving. He don't know who he obeying. He don't know who he in the presence of. Thomas looked at the other disciples with boldness and said, I will not believe this until I see it. You know how stupid that look? You know how stupid that look? You know how Mary Magdalene thought about Thomas when she saw that, when she heard that? Mary Magdalene, who didn't need all that, that stood at the tomb. You know how she, look, how she looked at him, Thomas? Say, it don't matter how much you, you forgive, uh, you say you forgive. Perception of a stupid person is real. <laughs> you, you can't overlook it, nigga. You mean to tell me that when he multiplied the five loaves and two fish, he still got proof to you that he rise from the dead after three days? You mean to tell me that when he rose Lazarus from the dead and you heard about it, he still got to come to you again and show you that he rise from the dead? He rose a man from the dead. He got to rise. He got to show you that he can rise himself when he rose another man. Think about it. It's like you help another man lift up 300 weights, pounds and weights. And then somebody say, I need to see you lift it up. I just help him lift it up. <laughs> so you need to know if I can lift it up. And I just helped him lift it up. It's like you showing somebody how to do 100 sit-ups. And then after you show them, they say, well, I need to see you do 100 sit-ups. I just showed them we just did the 100 sit-ups together. <laughs> Thomas. Judas, the rich man that was rich according to Bitcoin. <laughs> he walked away sorrowful. He walked away sorrowful. He, walk, he walked away sorrowful after Jesus introduced him to sowing. See, see. All Jesus, see, when Jesus want to deal with people's heart, he just goes straight to sowing. He want to deal with their heart, he goes straight to sowing. The rich man was talking about everything other than giving. And Jesus said, this how you inherit life. You got to become sensitive to my voice to sow. And the man said, uh-uh. He walked away grievously, which means that he walked away with resentment, with anger, he was upset that he had even confronted Jesus. And you think that sowing is not a heart target? It's a heart target. It's a heart target. Because as soon as the Lord went to that sowing, that man said, uh-uh, never mind. He, the man was so stupid, he didn't care about eternal life. The man was so stupid, he didn't care about the lake of fire. As soon as Jesus talked about sowing, the man went away. Now, I want to ask you a question. Why didn't Jesus tell him to start praying for 48 hours? Why didn't Jesus tell him to go on a 21 day fast? Why didn't Jesus tell him to read the word more? Why did Jesus deal with what he had in his presence that could honor Jesus?